Budget, rugged smartphones are a great way to get the functionality of a smartphone into a case that you don't particularly mind dropping. But most of them are quite cheap. What happens if you up the price a little bit? My name is Ian Buckley and this is the Make Use of Review of the AGM X3, a premium rugged Android smartphone. Now before we get into the specs, let's look at what you get in the box with this phone. Uh, you do get a quick charger, which will charge at 5 or 9 volts at 2 amps, or 12 volts at 1.5 amps. And it also will sustain quick charging, although you don't get a quick charger with the phone. The cable attaching it to the wall is a USB-C cable and it is one meter long and there is a USB-C to 1.5 millimeter headphone converter jack as there is no headphone uh, input on the phone itself. The box also contained a manual, a SIM extraction tool and two tiny little rubber bungs that are designed to go in the USB port when you are not charging it or using it to protect it from water ingress, which is something that we'll come to later in the review. The specifications of the X3 are quite impressive. It comes with stock Android Oreo 8.1.0 and it has a Snapdragon 845 processor. It also comes with up to 8GB of RAM and up to 256GB of internal storage. The version that I tested was 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. The Gorilla Glass 5 screen is 5.99 inches and is a 2160 by 1080 Full HD Plus display with a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio and a luminance of 500 candelas per square meter. The front facing selfie camera is 20 megapixels and the rear camera are dual 12 and 24 megapixel cameras which are uh, run using some unspecified artificial intelligence software. The phone measures 6.5 by 3.2 by 0.4 inches and it weighs 216 grams. The battery is a sealed 4100 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. The phone has a USB type C port on the bottom, it has a camera button and a power button on the right hand side and it has its volume buttons and a Google assistant button on the left hand side which unfortunately it seems cannot be reassigned. This phone can take dual nano sim cards or it can take a single nano SIM card and a micro SD card, which means you can up the storage the phone can use. The phone has a rear mounted fingerprint sensor along with dual JBL speakers which are controlled by their own PA Smart audio chip. Finally, this phone features an Armand Madman design, whatever that means, but it does have an IP68 rating which means it'll work underwater up to a depth of 1.5 meters. The phone also operates from minus 30 to 60 degrees Celsius and because of its ruggedized casing and floating hardware can probably take quite a beating, which is something we'll be testing later on in the review. Now that the specs are over, let's talk about what is actually important, how this phone feels to use. Well, the Full HD Plus screen is bright and I didn't have any problems seeing it in the sun, although the footage might not reflect this. This phone also does not have a notch, which I'm sure you'll have an opinion on. It feels much more like a normal flagship smartphone than it does a rugged smartphone. I measured weight at just over 200 grams, which only puts it around 50 grams heavier than the OnePlus 6T or the Google Pixel 3 XL. That said, the slightly larger screen might be a little difficult for those with small hands to use one-handed. AGM have made it clear by their advertising that they're targeting people who love the great outdoors with this phone. They're going for a combination of good looks and tough design, and on the surface at least, they have managed it. The phone, for example, supports face and locking which work flawlessly throughout testing but it also allows you to use it with gloves on up to a certain thickness so this phone does actually fit the profile of people who will be using it for the great outdoors. So this phone does perform great and of that there can be no doubt but aesthetics can be a little bit harder to quantify. I found the silver grey back metal and the black side metal to be very stylish and understated and if it wasn't for the rubberized corners I would have forgotten that this was a rugged smartphone. Of course what you think is going to be completely different. In terms of performance this thing pretty much flies. It has a Snapdragon 845 processor and at the time of making this review that's the fastest you're going to find in any production smartphone. The version I tested had 8GB of RAM and at no point at any time did I have any kind of slowdown. Obvious benchmark games like Need for Speed or PUBG ran flawlessly on their highest settings and while I I'm not much of a high performance mobile gamer, I certainly didn't notice anything that I would consider slow down or anything game breaking. Geekbench rates the multi-core at 8,670, which is up there with the Galaxy Note 9, the OnePlus 6T and is actually a little higher than the Google Pixel 3. The X3 has Bluetooth 5, dual SIM, dual voice over LTE and 802.11 AC, 2x2 MIMO Wi-Fi connectors. Basically this phone is as good as any other at connecting to things. Now the X3 does miss a headphone jack, which is something I'm still totally not okay with, but I do understand when it comes to ruggedized smartphones any entry to the phone is a possible point of failure, so I do find it a little bit more forgivable. However, you're not going to find me anytime soon saying that not putting headphone jacks on phones is okay, but that's just my opinion and not part of this review. In terms of battery management, I didn't use any special settings for the X3, I just turned it on and used it day to day. It has a background management tool which will turn things off when you're not using them. Now, 
it did mean that at first a lot of things weren't showing up for me and I had to whitelist various programs. But once I'd got that dialed in, I found it actually to be very good and the battery performance on this phone is among the best that I've ever come across. My guilty pleasure is late night YouTube and Twitch and this phone never once cut out on me in the evening. Charging the phone in the morning was a fairly quick affair as the quick charger can charge the entire battery in two and a half hours or if you put it on for about an hour it can take you from 30 to 80% without much problem. The battery is especially impressive given that it is a rugged smartphone yet it's only just over 10 millimeters thick. Compare that with other rugged smartphones you'll find some that completely blow the X3 out of the water when it comes to battery life but they're huge. This thing is the size of a normal smartphone and its battery is actually better than many other phones in its class despite the fact that it has all of this ruggedization and the things inside the phone sit on a sprung plate so that they don't get damaged when it's dropped. The amount of battery power they've managed to fit in this thing is actually quite incredible. The front facing selfie camera is a 20 megapixel camera which is huge but the app itself to use it is pretty lackluster. You don't really get anything with the camera app on this phone. Then again, if you just want nice looking photos, it will give you that. It also has the optional face beauty thing that are on so many phones these days, which turns you into a smooth sort of thing if you're into that. The artificial intelligence powered dual rear cameras take fantastic point and click photos. There's no way of getting around it. I don't really understand what the artificial intelligence is doing for normal photographs, but most of the photos I took, I didn't really put much thought into and they came out looking vibrant, bright, and most of the time perfectly exposed, which isn't bad for an automatic sensor. Nighttime performance is nothing special, but given how bad low light smartphone photography can be, the X3 is just fine. It's not gonna be competing with the Pixel 3, but then again, it doesn't have to. In terms of taking videos, well, See for yourself. The dual rear cameras give you pretty passable 1080p video. Uh, you're not going to be replacing your video camera with this phone or even your action cam anytime soon, but the image is good and I found the audio once again to be pretty decent where there wasn't any wind. As I mentioned before, if you were to plug, say, a lavalier mic into the USB-C extension, that would give you a marked increase in your video quality, but for just general sitting down point and click, this phone's pretty good. And bearing in mind that this is IP68 rating we're talking about, you can also get underwater footage as long as you don't go too deep. This phone is not gonna be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with any flagship phones in terms of its camera. In fact, it isn't even the best camera in its particular class. However, I don't think this matters. You do get beautiful photographs and beautiful videos with relative ease. And the reason most people are gonna be buying this phone is because it is rugged. In terms of other features, as I mentioned, this is a stock Android phone and Android Oreo 8.1.0 is fine. Uh, there is no uh, Android 9 Pi upgrade on the horizon, but to me this isn't too much of an issue. However, if you have your heart set on an Android operating system update, this is not the phone for you. Uh, one thing that is incredible are the speakers on this phone. This smartphone has the best speakers I've ever come across on any smartphone at all. It's not only that they give you good sound, you can turn this phone up really loud without the sound even distorting. So far this phone seems to be stacking up pretty well, but the all important question is whether it's rugged or not. It is an IP68 rated phone, which means that it is happy underwater up to a depth of 1.5 meters for half an hour. However, it has the same problem as every other rugged smartphone. What happens if you drop it in a lake? It's kind of useless then. Well, this brings me back to the mystery item I referred to at the start of this review. The huge clunky extra sort of phone case thing that I got it wasn't a case and it wasn't any kind of speaker as I thought it might be. It's a flotation device that fits directly to the phone. Now, as someone who has been into sailing for most of his life and has worked on water before, I can't tell you how cool of an idea that is. Um, I've used these cases before that you put your phone in and they have air in so that if you drop your phone overboard then it will float and at least you can go back and pick it up. But the problem with those is you can't use your phone while they're inside it. So you have to take your phone out and then if you drop it, it's gone. This flotation device worked perfectly and it meant that the phone could be used, the camera wasn't obscured and every part of the phone worked as it normally would even with this huge clunky uh, flotation device. Now to me, that's really, really cool. I can also understand why some of you are wondering why I'm so excited about that, but this is the review that I'm doing. Uh, if you do want this, uh, incidentally, I'm pretty sure that this is a separate purchase you will need to make, but if you are on or near water a lot, it's an absolute no-brainer. Speaking of water, I also referred to these tiny little rubber bungs, or as I started calling them the, oh, where is that rubber bung? I'm never going to see it again. And yes, I did lose one of them in the process of making this review. The idea behind these rubber bungs is they go in the USB-C port to stop water getting in. Now, there are plenty of other rugged smartphones that don't do this. So it does kind of raise an interesting question. Does the AGM X3 have a problem where you have to stop water getting in it? Or do these other phones not care over time what happens to their ports? 
That's not a question I can answer in this review, but it is worth thinking about. AGM are yet another company boasting this MIL STD 810G military certification, and allow me to remind you one more time that that isn't a thing. Uh, the military don't certify phones, there are guidelines the military use to test their own equipment, and I assume what they mean is that AGM have either tested it themselves using this, or they've got someone else to test them, but either way around, if you're going to throw around terms like you have a military grade phone, I have to test that, and that means I have to drop it. I hate breaking tech, and doing it for YouTube views is moronic, and even if we had a hydraulic press or a knife at 5000 degrees celsius, we wouldn't be using it on this phone. However, to do a fair drop test, I went to somewhere which had a hard surface, and I dropped it from a variety of heights. I dropped the phone a total of six times from one to three meters in height, and the phone just didn't care. It didn't even seem to make a sound when it hit the ground. Even though it's got a relatively flat front and back, it never seemed to uh, not hit the rubber bungs. Even when it hit very flat straight down, it bounced straight back up off the rubber corners. This phone does seem to be as rugged as it suggests, and because the inside of the phone is sprung, it seems like the innards are fairly well uh, protected in that regard. I used this phone for two full weeks, actually. This review ran on a little longer than I expected it to, and I have treated this phone horribly. Uh, in my opinion. It's been in my pocket with keys, it's been left face down on stone walls, it's been, it's been really badly tr treated. Um, and yet, the only damage I managed to do to this phone is a couple of scratches to the screen protector, a couple of which did go through and have left very small scratches on the Gorilla Glass screen. Now, given the amount of abuse I've thrown at this phone, that's amazing. So, the important question, should you get an AGM X3? Well, I came into this review sceptical. I decided on the first day of using this phone that I didn't particularly like it. I felt like rugged smartphones were a bit of a fad, I had a bad experience with the last one I reviewed, and I'd heard of AGM but I wasn't really expecting anything special from them, given that it's a very exciting time for Android smartphones in general. However, through the course of reviewing this phone, I have been won over in every single respect. This is truly a premium rugged smartphone. But that premium does come at a price. The 8GB of RAM, 64GB of internal storage version cost $729 from AGM, which might seem a little bit high for a relatively unknown Chinese company. This also puts it in the firing line of other smartphones which are branded at this price, and there are definitely budget smartphones from China that are much, much less money to buy. That said, this truly is a premium rugged smartphone, and if you were looking for something which combines aesthetics, power, and a rugged exterior which I didn't manage to break, the AGM X3 is a fantastic bet. Thank you all so much for watching this review. We do a lot more than just reviews on the Make Use of YouTube channel, we also have tech tips and tutorials, but for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. If you're here, you know why I'm still talking. AGM did give us one of the X3s to give away. So head to the link in the description to enter the competition, and use the code name FLOAT, that's F-L-O-A-T, in order to get more entries in our competition. Take care.